Greetings and welcome, friends. Yesterday we were talking about proving uh, quadrilaterals, four-sided polygons, as parallelograms and trying to determine what combinations of information were sufficient to come to that conclusion. Uh, for problem four, uh, what are our thoughts, class? How could I prove, if I could prove, this is a parallelogram? Theorem? Converse. Yeah. So uh, instead of post, it's the POSC. All right, how about six? Parallel opposite angles converse. Yeah, yeah. Just, just show me the homework. Hold it up. I'll see it with my laser vision. Nope. Yep. 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 Man, I like it. All right. Uh... What's another way I could have done this one, actually? Actually, oh, we didn't have a theorem for that, I don't think, regarding consecutive, did we? Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there was a converse for that one. This one was the new one. What was this one called? Parallel and congruent. And this one was a theorem because it didn't have a buddy on the t'other end. Uh, so this is the first time it showed up, so it was a theorem. Uh, all right, here's question 12. This one's good. Uh, find the values of x and y that make the quadrilateral a parallelogram. Uh, let's see. Based on the locations of these, I'm looking for the expressions that have x's or y's. Uh, I want to relate the ones that have x's, and so I might say that these two expressions are equal, right? Subtract 4x from both sides, uh, add 12, x equals 25. Now what could I do? Or y plus 7. Yeah, minus 8. Uh, so 4y plus... Uh, I'll, I'll leave that here for now. So that's 75 minus 8. That's what? 67. Uh, so that means 4y is equal to 60. y is equal to 15. Nice. Uh, so the key here uh, to avoid having to do too much of a system of equations is compare x's to x's and y's to y's if you can. We could have set a relationship between those two, but uh, at best I could only solve for one variable in terms of the t'other, and uh, then I would have to go back and solve another equation anyway. All right, uh, for this one, these are parallel, and if they were also congruent, then it's a parallelogram by the opposite sides parallel and congruent theorem. Uh, so I'm going to say when 2x plus 3 is equal to x plus 7, subtract x from both sides, x plus 3 equals 7, subtract 3, x equals 4. That is when that would be congruent by the opposite sides, parallel and congruent theorem. Aspect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, good stuff. All right, here we go. This one's a little bit more work. I, I have a feeling I didn't give myself enough space. Uh, A is 0, 1. A. Uh, B is 4, 4. Bravo. C is 12, 4. Over 12, up 4. Did I? 0, 1. Bam. That's funny. Great minds mistake alike, apparently. A, B, C. And uh, 8, 1. There we go. Delta. All right. Uh, show that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Yeah, the midpoint one is the quickest way. Uh, you only have to do two formulas. Yeah, midpoint of opposites, midpoint of opposites, if we could show that the diagonals bisect each other by showing that they have the same midpoint, 
uh, that would work quite well. Um, yeah, we could do that. Since I, I have this graphed, I could see that these are both horizontal, so I could actually conclude that those are parallel. I could also do distance formula. If I could show they're also congruent, that would work. Whole bunch of strategies you can use that are either going to use slope formula, distance formula, midpoint formula. Let's do a uh, midpoint real quick. So let's do uh, the midpoint of AC is going to be uh, 0 plus 12 over 2 comma 1 plus 4 over 2. Uh, so that's going to be 6 comma 5 halves, 2 and a half, uh, over 6 up 2 and a half. Hey, I happen to predict that pretty well. And let's see if that's the same as the midpoint of BD, Bravo Delta. Uh, so that's going to be 4 plus 8 over 2, average of the X's and average of the Y's. All right, all right. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. Uh, uh -oh. One. Oh, I did the math in my head of four. Uh, this, this four plus that one, automatically. So five halves. It works out. They're the same. So the reason this is a parallelogram is uh, what was the name of that theorem? Parallelogram diagonals converse. Good stuff. Uh, let's do one proof. Where am I at? Where's my slider? There it is. All right. Use the diagram uh, of. Try of PQRS, it's just a quadrilateral with the auxiliary line. Wow, that's so great. Uh, segment drawn to prove the opposite sides parallel and congruent theorem. So, if I knew these were parallel and congruent and had the given information as true, what's something I could say that might help me out? QS, what? Yeah, 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 let's. Yeah, by reflexive. Even if we didn't end up needing this, it's, you know, we can write down things that are true. They might not always be helpful. Uh, what's something else I could say? Yeah, either way, the, the S has to be the middle uh, initial to be referring to the right one. Uh, and that is true by alternate interior angles theorem. I think I could then prove that these triangles are congruent. Uh, so let's see, QRS, if I call it that one, QRS. So that would then have to be SPQ, yeah. How are these triangles congruent? Side angle side is why the triangles are congruent. I can then use CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles congruent, to say something else that's helpful. Like, for instance, uh, I don't know, I could say that these, uh, these are congruent or something. Uh, so I could say, yeah, QP is congruent to RS, or I guess I'll write SR by CPCTC, and then I could say uh, PQRS is a parallelogram uh, by, I just used opposite sides. Uh, so that's gonna be parallelogram opposite sides converse. Uh, I also could have you know, made conclusions about these angles and then proven that these sides were parallel uh, and then using definition of parallelogram, proven it was a parallelogram. Uh, lots, of, uh, lots of different options. All right, well, thank you for watching, mis amigos. Adios.